guys. It's Rob with Hard with Hydro Addiction. Um, today, tonight at midnight, Spoonbill season opens for those of us in Missouri. I'm sure it's open other places too, but a Spoonbill, a paddlefish, uh, they're delicious. They're, they get very large. They're a large freshwater fish. They're a plankton eater. They don't eat bait. You have to snag them to catch them. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show how to tie a rig so that you can drag dipsy divers and catch them. A lot of people drag weights, like a 16 ounce weight, drag it through the water and then you set a series of hooks above it, above the weight. And they drive along and they pull on the rod. And they might catch one once in a while. That's the way I used to do it. It's a lot of work. At the end of the day, you're done. You're spent. Dipsy divers bring all that to an end. You can cut or cover a lot more water a lot faster. Keep your line on the bottom at all times. And uh, they are very, very effective, as most people that snag know this. But anyway, this is a dipsy diver. Come in a package. You can buy them at bait stores, local bait stores. I buy mine at Cody's Bait and Tackle down here in Warsaw. But uh, take them out of the package, the brand new Dipsy Diver. The very first thing you want to do with the Dipsy Diver is there's a little bolt right here. This pops out. This When this pops out, the Dipsy Diver doesn't work. It's not effective. The Dipsy Diver will be floating down the river behind your boat. You got to clip it down like that. Tighten this little screw up. Get you a Phillips screwdriver. Just tighten that little screw up. Don't get it so tight you break it, but you want to get it plenty snug. That way it holds and it won't trip when it hits the bottom. Here I've got 100 pound test braided line and I'm just going to tie a square knot right here. Just let this one dangle. You're not going to do anything with that right there. This right here. You're going to tie yourself just tie your line to it. Just get a good strong knot. It's just going to drag. The dipsy diver is not going to do anything. All it's going to do is hold your weight on the bottom. Now, I like to put my lines a couple of feet, my hooks a couple of feet, starting a couple of feet from the bottom. So here, Right there, about a couple of feet. You're gonna fold your line, and put it through the eye of the hook, just like that. And then put the hook through the loop. And make sure your line's not all twisted up, tangled up. Then you're gonna come down. You're gonna twist the line and make another loop. Right about halfway down the shaft of the hook like that. And you're gonna make another loop Go where the barbs of the hook. You've got several different loops. You got a loop over each bar of the hook. You got a loop halfway down the hook, and you got your knot up here. Doing it like that puts the less stress as possible up here. You are going to get snagged, so get ready for it. But, uh, most of the time, if you back the boat up to the snag, you can pull it loose unless you just really go to setting and burying the hook in the snag, which is not good for you. But anyway, there's hook number one. I'll let it down here. Give me a couple of feet. And put on a second hook. These are 12 watt uh, treble hooks. You buy them in a box in bulk. I also buy them at Cody's Bait and Tackle in Warsaw. You're going to do the same thing with this hook as you did with the other one. So make sure your line's not all tangled up and twisted up. Loop around the shaft, around the barb. I, I do every barb. Some people don't, some people do. You only really, I think, need to do just one barb. But, like I said, 
I think the more barbs you do, the more loops you put around the hook, the less stress it puts on the line if the hook should hit something solid. And I really don't want to break my stuff off every time. There's hook number two. There's hook right there. The line tight, pulls the hook straight to drag it through the water. And I'll put the third hook. Just a couple of feet above the second hook. One of these dogs is gonna run around here in a minute. Wish they hadn't have been, but same thing, just loop over. secret. The key to dipsy divers. You're going to let out three times the amount of line of the water depth you're fishing in. For example, if you're fishing at 50 foot of water, which is what the predominant depth of the water is where I'll be fishing is about 50 foot. You let out 150 foot of line. You uh, set your drag real loose on your reel so that you've just got just enough tension on the drag that you're not letting line out while you're driving the boat. But you're gonna let 50, 150 foot of line out, 50 foot of water, set your drag loose, troll the boat at exactly five miles an hour. Not four, not four and a half, not six, five miles an hour. Right down the channel of the, of the lake. The spoonbill will be running right the bottom, they're on their spawning run you'll hit them. Your dipsy diver will drop down and hit the bottom. If you put your hook too close to the dipsy diver, you're going to snag everything there is to snag on the bottom of the lake. You will catch rocks, sticks, other fishing rods, just whatever's down there. It, it just You're going to be hung up constantly and you're not going to be able to get anything done. So leave it. Start with your knots a couple of feet. Hook about there, that's about right. Your dipsy diver is going to drip down there and dig into the bottom, and your front hook, your lead's going to be right there off the bottom, about six inches, and you'll pull the fish in. Five miles an hour, 150 feet of line and 50 foot of water, and go. Now, if you've got 150 feet of line out and you run over a corner in the channel and you go up into 40 foot, don't, don't go reeling all your line in. Don't be doing all that work. If you're predominantly in 50 foot of water, but out 150 foot of line. It's pretty simple logic. It's very easy. It's not hard to do. Do not forget to leave your drag loose. When you hook a fish, that's when you tighten your drag up and so you can reel the fish in. But anyway, my next video will be catching spoonbill and I will see you then.